everybody. My name is Yulin. I'm a PhD student in the, at the University of Maryland, and I'm a fellow in the Shahinab lab at the National Cancer Institute. Uh, so for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we constructed tumor lineages uh, with single cell methylation data, in the meantime, selecting potentially lineage informative CPG sites. So if you've been to the CCB uh, satellite, you've probably seen this slide a lot of times. Uh, as we know, cancer is a highly heterogeneous disease. We have these somatic alterations that accumulate over the course of uh, tumor evolution, resulting in a very diverse cell population. Um, we want to understand this intra-tumor heterogeneity better, uh, and potentially we can uh, improve cancer diagnostics, prognostics, and potentially come up with more effective and targeted treatment. So for this purpose, a common analytical approach is phylog uh, phylogenetic reconstruction, which, given a sequenced tumor biopsy, reconstructs a tumor lineage tree based on the observed somatic alteration events. And uh, since we're talking about single cell in this talk, uh, the leaves in this tree will be individual cells. Uh, and after the tree is reconstructed, uh, we can infer the evolutionary trajectory of the tumor. So there's been a vast body of such studies that leverage somatic uh, mutations and copy number al alterations. Uh, however, due to the high level of sparsity in single cell sequencing data, uh, there are a lot of false negatives in the single cell mutation profiles, and in copy number calling, chromosomal breakpoints uh, many times cannot be confidently determined. So problems like these pose great challenges uh, to single cell phylogeny inference. So that made us think, are there other signals we can leverage in this analysis? Um, it is widely understood that epigenetic mechanisms are key to tumor progression. So one of the most well-studied epigenetic signal is CPG methylation, uh, which is an addition of a methyl group to the cytosine at a CG dinucleotide all on, all on the genome. Um, it has been shown in literature that methylation profiles can distinguish central nervous system tumors of different subclassifications and grades, uh, they can also be used to identify the primary site in cancers of unknown primary origins. Um, more specifically, in terms of phylogeny reconstruction, uh, CPG methylation may be a great source of signal uh, because first, just like how mutations can be inherited by daughter cells doing cell replication, the methylation status of a CPG site can also largely be copied from parental to daughter DNA. Uh, and secondly, uh, more importantly, I guess, uh, in the work by Gaty et al., um, they pointed out that uh, the methylation uh, maintenance mechanism has an error rate four, organ uh, four orders of magnitudes higher than that of DNA-based maintenance, which means compared to mutations, we may simply observe more uh, methylation events, uh, especially in a single cell setting where the observed events are already very sparse. Simply having more amounts of signals might be very helpful. Uh, that said, using CPG methylation to construct tumor lineage tree could be quite tricky. First, single cell methylation data has very shallow read coverage. In each cell, most of the covered sites have only a couple of reads. The shallow read coverage also means it's very likely th that the reads do not cover all alleles present. Additionally, methylation is known to be a generally more transient signal than mutations. Um, and in a recent work by Meyer and colleagues, they show that while the methylation status of some CPG sites are persistently inherited during cell replication, others seem to be more independently resampled at each iteration. Um, for our purpose of constructing tumor lean industry using methylation as features, it is intuitive that only sites of the persistency model could harbor changes in methylation status that would be lineage informative while those of the mixture model at noise at best. So with the challenges in mind, we pose our research questions. Can we leverage single cell methylation data to infer tumor evolution trajectories? Can we, in the meantime, identify CPG sites that are lineage informative? And finally, can we uncover biological insights from these results? So in an attempt to answer those questions, uh, we developed Scooter a distance-based tool to jointly infer a tumor lineage tree and identify lineage-informative CPG sites with single-cell methylation data. So here's a summary diagram of Scooter, uh, and let's look at each part in a little detail. 
So as input, we have a cell by CPG site matrix where each element contains the number of methylated and unmethylated reads covering a site in the cell. And optionally, if available, we also take in a second input matrix of the same size containing the copy number calls. The recount matrix is usually incredibly sparse. Um, so in the first step, we leverage heuristic filtering to select a dense submatrix. And if computational resources allow, we can also coordinate the selection of cells and sites with an integer linear program by clustering formulation. In the second step, accounting for copy number, we try to correct wrongly called methylation status in reads, likely due to sequencing error. So for example, in a diagram, for a cell at the CPG site, uh, we observe both methylated and unmethylated reads, but given some model parameters, if our calculation indicates that it's more likely that a singular unmethylated read is due to sequencing error rather than is truly sampled from underlying heterozygous alleles, we correct the unmethylated read to a methylated one. And from this step on, we assume there is no sequencing read in there, uh, uh, sequencing error in reads. So up to now, the first two stages in the pipeline serve to denoise and clean up the single cell methylation sequencing data. Um, next, we enter an iterative procedure. At each round, we first compute the pairwise distances among cells uh, using the current set of CPG sites using an expected distance formulation, and then we apply neighbor joining to obtain a tree. Then, using a measure we develop, we score each CPG site based on how much it is informative of the current lineage tree. Um, and intuitively, uh, if a CPG site harbors a key methylation change that persists down the lineage, uh, there should exist exists a branch in the tree where if we look at the distribution of methylation status for that site in the two bipartitions of cells induced by the branch, the difference will be large. We quantify that with a divergence measure and for each CPG site, its score is defined by the largest divergence measure at any branch in the tree. We then rank the CPG sites based on their scores and prune out the lowest ranking ones. The remaining CPG sites are then used to construct a tree for the next iteration. And between adjacent iterations, we quantify the difference in the trees using Robinson fold distance. Um, and after many rounds, we detect the iteration where that distance is lowest, and we output the tree constructed at that iteration. So intuitively, we want to stop at, a, at an approximate point where most noisy CPG sites have been pruned out, leading to the initial decrease of tree distance between iterations, but most informative CPG sites still remain, uh, the further elimination of which will again lead to an increase of tree distance uh, between durations. So finally, we output the tree constructed at the detected iteration, and if we have labels for the spatial origins of the cells, uh, we can infer the migration history of the tumor by first labeling the internal nodes of the tree via Fitch's algorithm, then traversing down the label tree, counting each change from one label to another as one migration event. So that was Scooter. For validating our method, we first wanted to see how our method performs on simulated data. Um, we simulated single cell methylation recount matrices from 10 clone trees of uh, various topologies, and then we introduced uh, noise and sparsity. We asked the question, um, if we apply Scooter on these data sets, will, uh, will the reconstructed lineage trees capture the ground truth clonal relationships? Uh, so for comparison, we also include a baseline uh, method Briefly, the baseline method computes the hemming distance between the binarized uh, methylation status vectors of each cell pair, um, and then we normalize that distance by the number of shared sites, then apply neighbor joining on the pairwise distance matrix to obtain a tree. So here at the bottom, each plot corresponds uh, to results on one clone tree. Uh, the leftmost column in each plot shows the performance of the baseline approach. The T0 column uh, in the middle shows the intermediary results from Scooter prior to the iterative procedure. Um, and the T star column shows the performance of the uh, final output to Scooter. So this comparison was done using two measures, shown here in blue and in orange, respectively. Um, blue indicates the total number of events in the inferred clonal evolution history. Um, and orange indicates how close the inferred topology is to uh, the ground truth. So for both measures, uh, they're the lower the better, and the dashed lines indicate the best value possible. 
So as we can see, Scooter outperforms the baseline approach in data sets generated from nine out of 10 simulated clone trees and performs comparably in data sets generated from simulated clone tree four. Um, it is also worth noting that despite Scooter's many times already outperforms baseline prior to the iterative pr uh, procedure, the iterative procedure of Scooter seems to be able to um, lead to additional boost in performance by further refining the signal. We also looked beyond simulated data. Um, Wei and Zhang introduced in their 2020 paper a novel sequencing method to accurately capture uh, microsatellites and simultaneously cytosine methylation from single cells. Um, and they constructed lineage trees using microsatellite allele types um, to validate that method. They uh, derived ex vivo trees from cancer cell lines, and then they sequenced single cells from clones with known clonal relationships. So while their microsatellite-based trees um, are accurate for microsatellite unstable cell lines, the authors show that the microsatellite uh, stable globostoma, uh, globostoma cell line, uh, the tree built from microsatellite allelotypes, only has an accuracy comparable uh, to a random tree. So we can see here that the tree on the top right, it does not reflect the ground truth clonal relationships on the left. Um, but when we applied Scooter to the methylation data on the same set of single, uh, single cells, the resulting tree fairly accurately captures the clonal relationships in a ground truth ex vivo tree. So we can, uh, we can see that we have the orange as the out group here, and then we have red and green in this clade, and then the rest is the cell in the clays in the middle. So this result provides further evidence that CPG methylation can provide a uh, valuable signal for lineage reconstruction, and it also provides further validation of the method. Uh, we also looked beyond cell lines um, in real uh, patient data sets. So patient CRC01 is a colorectal cancer patient extensively studied in the work of Bien and colleagues. So for this patient, there are matching whole genome CPG methylation and RNA-seq data of single cells sampled from normal tissues as well as four distinct lesions, primary tumor, lymph node metastasis, liver metastasis, and post-treatment liver metastasis. Within each lesion, there are also multiple sampling locations. So we called copy number from the single cell RNA-seq data and applied Scooter on the methylation and copy number information. As we can see on the top right, um, the resulting lineage tree corresponds highly with the lesion of origin of single cells. One can also see some clustering of the sampling locations. Additionally, the tumor migration history inferred from the lineage tree shown on the bottom right narrates a very straightforward model of tumor evolution that normal colon cells evolve into primary tumor cells, which then sees the lymph node metastasis, which then sees the more distant liver metastases. Our result is in contrast with the results by the original authors who also has tempted to construct a tumor tree with the methylation data, but gotten coherent clustering of self, lesion, origin, or sample locations, as shown on the top left. Um, the simple tumor regression history from our result is also in contrast with the rather complex one constructed by the uh, original authors by their single cell copy number based analysis, um, as shown on the bottom left. So upon a closer examination, we found that um, what led them to the unnecessary complex conclusion was likely the inaccurate chromosomal breakpoints inferred from the very sparse single cell methylation data. Um, our result is also in contrast to the result we obtained using mutations called from the matching single cell RNA-seq data. So due to sparsity, clustering of single cells were performed prior to uh, constructing the mutation tree. So each leaf here is actually a cluster of cells. Um, and the cluster makeup um, in terms of lesion origin or sampling locations uh, is indicated with the colored bars. So immediately we can see that the leaves in the mutation tree are already heterogeneous, unlike what we obtain with methylation. So to examine the overall performance of Scooter uh, briefly, we benchmarked against alternative approaches using all eligible patients in the BM metastatic colorectal cancer cohort. So for this, we also included IQ tree, which was used to construct small-scale uh, single-cell methylation lineage trees uh, in works by the Dan Landau group. Um, we used the same uh, two measures as uh, explained before, and we can see that Scooter infers migration histories comparable, if not simpler, than those suggested by alternative methods. 
And in terms of running time compared to the popular IQ tree, which is maximum likelihood-based tool, Scooter as a distance-based approach obtains those results orders of magnitudes faster. So one piece of biologically interesting result is that when we looked at the genomic locations of the CPG sites we identified to be lineage informative, across all patients, we observed an enrichment in the inter-CPG uh, inter island regions uh, compared to the original input set of CPG sites. So a potential explanation is perhaps that CPG islands are functionally important and therefore more tightly regulated and maintained, and as a result, we might not find those lineage informative methylation changes there. So I believe there is still a lot of room for interesting biological interpretations and validations with our results, and that will be one of the key objectives of our future work. So to summarize, in this work, we introduced Scooter, a tool to jointly construct tumor lineage trees and identify lineage informative CPG sites leveraging single cell methylation data. Um, we applied Scooter on a similar data set, and we show that the iterative procedure of Scooter uh, can provide further refinement of the performance. We also applied Scooter on a cell line data set as well as the metastatic colorectal cancer patient cohort with Bannon colleague. Um, and then we show that Scooter is able to infer uh, simple uh, tumor progression histories while um, using methylation data while we might not find those with uh, either mutations or uh, other sorts of signal. So if anything, I hope to have sparked your interest in studying uh, CPG methylation in a context of tumor evolution with this talk. Um, and uh, we have a preprint on BioArchive. Please check it out if you like. Um, I'd like to acknowledge my uh, collaborators, and especially Cindy and Fareed, who are my joint uh, first authors. I'd also like to acknowledge the funding agencies. Um, also like to thank the reviewers for this work who uh, whose constru constructive comments really improved the quality of this work. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my friends and colleagues, uh, both in the Shackenau Lab and the Center for Bioinformatics and Computational Biology at University of Maryland for providing support throughout my studies. Um, so with that, I'd like to take some questions. Thanks so much.